Hey there! Welcome to this video, where we will take a look at various methods, to iterate over a dictionary. But before moving further, subscribe to the channel, to receive new video updates. A dictionary in Python, is a collection of key-value pairs, where each key is associated with a value. Elements of a dictionary, are enclosed between curly braces, a single key, and its value are separated by a colon. Key-value pairs are separated by a comma. Iterating a dictionary means, accessing each key, and value of that dictionary, one by one. Let's look at each method of iteration. First, let us define a dictionary, with three key-value pairs. First method is using, for in loop. Its syntax is, for, a variable name, followed by, an operator, and the dictionary name. In every iteration, this loop variable, will contain the key of dictionary entry. Let's print the key and value. To get the value, corresponding to the key, write the key after dictionary variable, enclosed between square brackets, and run the program. Look! We are able to access each key, and the value associated with it. Second way of iterating over a dictionary, is using its items function. Since items is a function, you need to invoke it, using a dot, after the dictionary variable. Now, the loop variable does not contain a key, but an item. So, change this to item. Though this is not necessary, but variable names should represent the value they contain. Now, let's see, what this item contains. So, print item. Remove this print statement. Run the program. Look, it printed each key value pair of the dictionary. If we carefully examine the printed values, each item is a tuple. To be sure, let's print the type of each item, using inbuilt type function. Run the program. Tuple it is. If you are not familiar with tuple, watch the video suggested at the top left corner. Elements of a tuple are indexed, with the index of first element as 0, second is 1, and so on. To access the elements of a tuple, write its index enclosed in square brackets, after the tuple variable. So, to get the key, the index will be 0, and for value, it will be 1. Run the program. Key and values, are accessed successfully. As you saw, this variable is a tuple of two elements. Instead of accessing its elements using numeric indexes, we can directly assign them to two separate variables. Here, first variable from the left, will contain the first tuple element, second, will have the second tuple element, and so on. This is called unpacking a tuple. This will be replaced with key. This, with value. Run the program. It works. Similar to items function, dictionary has a keys function. This returns a collection of all the keys of dictionary. You can then, iterate over this collection, to get all the key value pairs. For better naming convention, change this variable to key, since it will contain key of dictionary item. Now, this should be replaced with key and value can be accessed using key and dictionary variable. Run the program. Perfect. There is one more method to iterate over dictionary items. Open terminal from the link below. Start Python shell by typing Python and hitting enter. To view all the functions and methods of a class, use di or function and provide it the class name as argument. Class name of dictionary, is dict. So, di or function, and dict in parenthesis as argument. Hit enter. These are all the functions of a dictionary. You can see items, and keys functions, which we covered just now. As you can see, this function, underline underline iter, underline underline. This function, can also be used, for iterating a dictionary. It returns a collection of keys. So, in every iteration, the loop variable will be a key of dictionary item. Let's change the code accordingly. In this case, loop variable will be the key. Value will be accessed, using the key enclosed in square brackets, after the dictionary variable, just as we saw in earlier examples. Run the program. Works fine. So, we covered four ways of iterating a Python dictionary. First, using for in loop. Second is, with items function. Third, with keys function, and finally, 
with underline underline ITE or underline underline function. Hope the video was useful. Thanks for watching.